Hello, everybody. We're here at Henry C. Oates Field in Due West, South Carolina to see the Erskine College Flying Fleet against the Tigers of Clemson. I'm Derek Ellington. I'm here with Alden Knight and Alan Hancock. We'll be giving you the play-by-play -play for tonight's game. Clemson's taking the field. We're getting ready to start in just a couple of seconds. With the kickoff. Clemson has won a toss and is elected to see. College. 43. Rob Still. The kick is underway. It goes to number 18, O'Neill for Clemson. He takes it up the left side. Gang tackled. Stuck by Robert Stidham. Brought down to 43, Rob Stidham. First down for Clemson on about the 30 29 yard line. Erskine College has come into tonight's game very pumped up and very prepared after suffering a tough loss to Clemson at Clemson. Erskine College has worked hard the past couple weeks to prepare for it, and I think we're going to see a different team out here tonight. The Clemson quarterback is number 12, Harrington. That play went for about two yards, second down, and about the 31. In the backfield for Clemson is Hall at tailback and Collins at fullback. Handoff. Tackle made down. by number 59, Brian O'Dell. Third down and about seven at the 34 yard line. He brings him out of the huddle. Third down play. Man wide out to the wide side of the field on the right. He hands to Hall. He goes left and is stacked up by a gang of Erskine tacklers. Appeared to maybe gain a yard, get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down to Clemson. Large crowd forming tonight at Henry C. Epps Field. Erskine's got a lot of support out there tonight. Appears as though Clemson is going to punt. Back deep for the fleet is number 85, Eric Peterson, and number 35, Kelvin Dinkins. The punt is off away. It's a high spiraling kick. You can't quite get it to turn over. It drops at midfield and is downed by Clemson's number 26, Gilstrap. Bringing Erskine out of the huddle will be Robert Stidham tonight for the first time. He's usually a, 
a running back. He's had to move to quarterback because of the injuries that they suffered in the last game. Kelvin Dinkins is the fullback, and Dave Coyne is at the tailback. He takes a snap. He Flag pitches on the play. option to David Coyne. Turns up field and is banged up by some Clemson defenders, led by number seven, Fort. Looks like it may be motion on the defense on Clemson. Clemson and Erskine is elected to take the penalty. Which moves the ball up to the 45 yard line. First down, Erskine, five yards to go. Erskine's defense made a really strong show on Clemson's first possession. Well, they said they were going to take a new look on defense. Try to put they in did. Some, some new things. It appears to be working. Stidham brings them out of the huddle. Gives it to Calvin Dinkins inside. up the middle. Calvin He's banged up. Tackle. Brought down by a crew of Clemson players led by 94 Murray. He appeared to get back to the line, maybe gain a yard. Second down. The second down, five flying fleet. At about the 46 yard line. The right side of the line consists of Bobby Elliott at the guard position. Play goes up the middle, looks like he gained about a couple yards. Probably be third down and about two yards for the first down. On the right side of the line, Bobby Elliott is the right guard. Brian Burnett is the right tackle. Eric Peterson is the tight end on the right side for the fleet. Number 96, Chris Cochran into the game for Flying Plate. Brian O'Dell is the left guard. David Chapman is the left tackle. Chris and Kyle Harden is the tight end on the left side for the fleet. Oh, he goes to David Coyne up the middle. David Coyne up the middle. He gets the first down on a big third down play for Erskine. They complete their first third down conversion. Move it all the way up to Clemson's 45 yard line. First down fleet. Strong play by Dave Coyne. Wayne King is wide to the left. He pitches to David Coyne on the right side. Kelvin Dinkins has a good block. Dave Coyne turns it upfield for a strong six yards. Tough running by David Coyne. Moves it all the way up to Clemson's 40 yard line. Erskine's Second down and about four. Erskine's looking strong on the ground, though. I don't think, I think that might be the key of the game tonight. The offensive line can hold up. I think they'll be the first to say they weren't weren't as strong as they'd like to have been two weeks ago against Coastal Carolina. I'm sure they fired up and got a different look. Appears to be working thus far. Second down play. Stidham takes a snap. Hands to Kelvin Dinkins who bumped immediately. Leans forward maybe to get back to the line of scrimmage. Looking at these teams before the game, Erskine, Erskine has a little bit of trouble sizing up to the bigger Clemson guys, but you got to give Erskine a hand for the way they're hitting out there. They're really hitting hard. So. I think they expect it to be oversized. There's an Erskine player down. We'll identify when we get the number. Injuries have played Erskine. They suffered bad games. Uh, their starting quarterback, Jimmy Temple, was hurt against Coastal Carolina. Has had several torn ligaments in his leg. Howard Wheeler suffered a fracture in his leg two weeks ago. Uh, Fracture in a tendon pull, but he's supposed to be out practicing Monday because he really wants to play. That's that's been the attitude of the Erskine Flying Fleet. These guys have really worked hard and given a lot to their team, and you know, they really want to win this. One. Robert Stidham is quarterbacking for the fleet now in an injury non-related to football. Two years ago, lost almost all mobility in his left arm, and has managed to come back and quarterback the fleet tonight. It's an option to the left to pitch. He turns up field and a strong first and move. Stays on his feet all the way down to the Clemson 26 yard line. That run by Bruce Canada, freshman, 5'10, 155 pounds from Greer. Strong 
and run. Well, they put the spot at the 27. Erskine making incredible yards, looking very strong on their first possession. They are looking very sharp, very sharp. First down and 10 to Clemson, 27. I think the Clemson guys are kind of scratching their heads right now. They weren't expecting the fleet to come out so fired up. A little bit of trouble with Kelvin Dickens' helmet right now. Get that straightened out. Nothing to nothing, still the score with 9.30 left in the first quarter. Erskine on the march at the Clemson 27 yard line. He brings him out for the first down play. Oh, Stidham takes the snap. it a little bit. It's dropped for a loss. Sack. A broken play. He turned and looked for a running back and he had bobbled the snap and didn't seem to have anyone there and tried to turn it up and was met pretty rudely at the back of the line of scrimmage. He appears to have lost a yard. Second down and 11, about the 28 of Clemson. That tackle was made by pretty much the whole defensive line. Oh, it looked like somebody he has the big point on the pick. draw play, and he's strung up too. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. It's like a little bit of early movement on that play, but no flag. The hitting by Erskine seems to be a little more intense. They seem to be a little bit readier to play, as Derek was saying. It'll be third down and about 12 now. From the, from the Clemson 29. It's good to look down and see the bleachers here at Oak Stadium rapidly filling up with Erskine supporters. That's a, that's a good sign considering all this football team's gone through to be here tonight. The support's been wonderful. They've had tough games thus far in the season, and the fans are always real good. Pitch right four. goes to coin. He turns right, can't find much daylight. Drop back to lunch. Gains maybe a yard. Gets it to the Erskine. Back near around the 30. Looks like they're bringing in the field goal team. Be fourth down. It appears as though Stidham is going to try a field goal. It'll be a 47 yard attempt. The snap is from the 30. Placing it at about the 37 to make it a 47 yard attempt. Place is down. The kick is long. Long enough, but a little bit wide to the left. A good kick by Stidham. And an impressive showing for Erskine on their first series. Clemson's defense obviously realizing they were going to have to tighten up a little bit. Erskine defense as we can come up with and Bobby Elliott from Hunter Huss High School in North Carolina is the nose tackle. He's number 53. David Chapman, number 70, known to Erskine Ice as Tubby, is the end. The Clemson quarterback the drops down the pass. The it's intercepted Appeared to be looking for number 84 down long Patterson and number 43 Robert Stidham, who also plays linebacker on defense, picked it off at the Erskine 45. David Chapman obviously excited. First down Erskine at the Clemson 45. <laughs> it goes goes back to what we said earlier about the Clemson guys kind of having to scratch their heads for a second. This isn't the flying fleet team they thought they knew. The defense for Erskine is definitely toughened up. They seem to be very fired up. Stidham brings them out of the hovel. Dinkins in the backfield. The pitch goes to Coyne. He turns it up back to the middle. Is met hard. Drives it down to the Clemson 40-yard line. Gains about four yards. Second down and about six. Beautiful night for football here in Due West. Couldn't ask for, for, better, for better weather or a better turnout. That's for sure. Go 
6.45 left in the first quarter. That score is 10-0 and nothing. The ball's on the 41-yard line was the spot. Second down and about seven. Stidham drops back to pass and gets a block from David Coyne and overshoots Chris Cothran over on the right sideline. He's a 6'1", 170-pound freshman from Ware Shoulders. Robert Stidham, the quarterback for Erskine tonight, who also plays linebacker and intercepted that pass a while ago, went to Richard Wynn High School. He was a football All-Stater in 1984. The center is Edward Gibson for Erskine. He went to the Citadel for a little while on a full scholarship to play football and was offered a half scholarship to play at USC. The handoff goes to Dave Coyne up the middle, struggling to mark for his yards. It's very close to the first down. This one may call for the chains. Hard, tough running for Dave Coyne. He was met about at the line of scrimmage and got almost four yards all on himself. First down, Erskine. Football team asking for a little help from the fans and they have no trouble getting it. <coughs> Coin fault to the 35 yard line. It'll be first down there, 10 to go. Well, the Erskine players have come in tonight's game talking about a new ideal and a new setup for their for their play. And tell you what, I like what I've seen so far tonight, Alan. Hard work and determination. Stidham brings him out of the huddle. He takes a snap and drops back to pass. He's got nine. Nice catch. He's out of bounds. Catch the trigger to Chris Cochran at about the Erskine 20 yard line. Erskine is on the move again. Raw emotion. That's what's down there right now. That pass went for. 25 yards, 15 from the line of scrimmage, moved it all the way down to the Erskine 20, I mean the Clemson 20. It'll be first down and 10 to go there. The fleet on the move and the crowd is responding. Stidham brings them out of the huddle. He's got Wayne King to the short side left. The pitch goes to Dave King. It's a reverse to Wayne King going back to the right side. He gets a block from Stidham and he turns it upfield, jumps up and is met rudely back at the line of scrimmage, but we have a flag on the play. Like Wayne might have to be a track man after that hurdle. What do you think, Alan? He got stuck. I don't think he'll leave his feet many more times. That stick was by number 26 for Clemson, Gilstrap. The penalty seems to be working against Erskine as the referees are talking to the Clemson captain. And it appears that they're going to take the penalty. 10-yard penalty, probably holding. Yes, holding on the flying fleet. I'll make it first and 20 on the Clemson 30, and it'll be interesting to see. Oh. Number 27 first and Lee Vile, 6'2", 180-pound freshman from Charleston. <coughs> Seemed a little too anxious on that one. That'll cost first and five more. I think he was just sharing the typical Erskine attitude. Let's go, let's go. He didn't want to wait for the snap. First and 25, ball down 35. It'll be interesting to see how Erskine comes back from a little adversity and see if they can pick up a very tough first down. He brings them out of the snap. Stidham takes the snap, drops back to pass. Oh, it's a fumble that comes to Clemson's number 64. There's nothing but ground in front of him. Can't stop him, touchdown Clemson. Bynum intercepted a fumble after Robert Stidham was hit blindly. It's six to nothing, Clemson. They'll try for the extra point. Well, if you're Erskine fan, you gotta hate it when that happens. But that's a tough break. Erskine was playing very well and very much on the move, and that's a very stinging blow there. Robert Stidham never saw the defensive back coming. He was hit. The ball popped out of his hand, and it's gonna take a lot of a lot of courage to try and come back after that. This might be the spark Clemson needs to get their offensive machine rolling. We'll just have to wait and That's see. That's true. Clemson had seemed a little flat for most of the night. The snap is back, the pick is down. 
the signal from the referees, it is good. It went over the side. Number eight, Corbett, the place kicker for Clemson, tacks on the PAT, makes it 7 nothing. Erskine needs another good series here to try and regain their composure. That stung a lot. But the crowd is right. They're playing well so far. I don't think the fleet's coming in for a landing yet. No, no, you know, they call these guys the Bumblebee Squadron, which is an apt name for, kind of never thought they'd get off the ground. And you know, with the looks on paper, you didn't think it would have been possible, but it's the beauty of club football. These guys don't get anything for being out here. No scholarships, nothing. This is the appreciation of the fans and the thrill of playing football is all that they're out here for. And, Gotta admire them for their hard work and effort. These are guys who are out there every day working hard and hitting and just going at it. Gotta admire the Erskine Club football team. Doing the kicking for Clemson. Number eight, Corbett. Nice go on a nice kick received by Kelvin Dinkins at about the 15 yard line. He goes straight up the field, gets a lot of good blocking, stays on his feet up to about the 33 yard line. Make up the 38 yard line. Good field again, good field position again for Erskine. Let's we'll see if they can't mount a strong drive this time. You know, Erskine's only looked to the air a couple times this evening. Huh? It'd be interesting to wonder what's going to happen with the strong arm of Rob Stidham if they start converting on some aerial offense. Stidham brings him out of the huddle, gives a handoff to Dave Coyne at the middle, who is drugged down behind the line of flags Stidham. on the play, Doc. Flags on the play. Appeared to lose a couple yards, but the flag is down. It was at the line of scrimmage, my guess would be holding on the fleet, but he's going to talk to Robert Sidham, so it's obviously on Clemson. Erskine obviously will accept the penalty after the, the pour down. He's walking it off. A 15 yard penalty against the Tigers. the call against the Tigers. Unsportsmanlike conduct, I believe, was the call. A 15-yard penalty against the fleet brings it all the way back into their territory at about their 47-yard line. It'll be first down Erskine. Robert takes a snap, is hit immediately, pitches out to Dave Coyne, who is stacked up for Clemson, and then rolls forward for a couple yards. Hit initially by Clemson's number 18, O'Neill and stumbles forward to get almost back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe loses a yard. Second down and 11 at Clemson's 48. Dave Corner, Jr. out of Lake Wales, Florida. Played, played football before he came to Erskine at the University of Central Florida. And making a strong showing here tonight. I think Dave Coyne is a senior in uh, eligibility wise. So I think he'll be gone after this year, which is a shame. He, he takes the handoff up the middle and is stacked up immediately. Tough to get the Clemson numbers. That play got back to the line of scrimmage. Third down, Erskine, again at the 48. Clemson jerseys are very tough to identify. They're sort of hard to see. That last tackle was by number 28, Burns. And off again. Beautiful rolling forward play. Dave Coyne seeing his, seeing his action running. I think he just drug three Clemson guys forward with him on that play. Gets about four yards. It'll be fourth down for the fleet. Ray King appears to be in to do the punting. A little under three minutes left to go in the first quarter of play. Yeah. 
Back deep for Erskine is number 18, O'Neal, a linebacker. The snap goes to King. A long way to kick, a low spiraling kick. Fielded at about the 11-yard line, and he's stacked up immediately by David Chapman and David Coyne. Clemson will take over at about their 13-yard line. Coyne really showing his ability all over the field tonight. Sure is. Making, as is Stidham, making very strong moves on offense and defense. Interesting to see how the Erskine defense comes back. Maybe they, maybe they need to get a, another big play or another big series to sort of help the offense get started again after that very tough break they had a second ago. Erskine, Clemson sends two people wide right, rather, to the wide side of the field. They have the eye backfield. Quarterback drops back, looking to the right. He throws to the sideline and overthrows number one, Yakel. Defense applied heavily by Robert Stidham, number 43 for Erskine, number 21, Bruce Canada, and number 96, Chris Cothran was also there. What we were talking about earlier, players like Dave Coyne and Rob Stidham kind of exemplified the Erskine footballers. You know, versatility, because these guys, for the most part, are playing both ends of the field. They don't. They like the numbers of some schools to where you can just have special teams and offensive and defensive teams. They're really working hard out there. It's good to see these guys stick it in there and maybe get some of the injured players back, maybe get maybe get some recruiting if that's possible to do with no scholarships. Clemson quarterback is in trouble and is banged up behind the line way back at Clemson's 10-yard line, appeared to lose about three yards. Good pressure by the defensive line of first. Outstanding play by... Freshman Barry Threadgill. Erskine has a lot of freshmen on the roster, which is just something that proponents who are looking for the future have to have to be happy with. Erskine's looking good for the future with a lot of freshmen talking to The quarterback swings wide, brought down by a horde of Erskine players, but there's a flag on the play. Number 70. David Chapman, Tubby's been getting a lot of action on the offensive and defensive end tonight. Bruce Canada getting up slowly from that hit. He's, it's like he hurt his leg or his ankles walking it off slowly, though. He's, he's not coming out, so he must be all right. As Derek was saying earlier, the fleet is definitely relying on their upperclassmen as 17 of 31 players for the fleet are either freshmen or sophomores. So they'll be around for a while and it'll be real good to see football at Erskine again. With the support that's continuing to grow, it just makes one wonder, huh? Clemson's going to have to put, punt rather after a, after a strong defensive stand, which is maybe what they needed. Number three for Clemson is Arbana, he's the punter, a left-footed kicker. Erskine, Erskine retaliates by sending Eric Peterson, number 85, and Kelvin Dinkins, number 35, back to receive. Officials debating whether it's a third or fourth down after that last series of plays, but... Appears they've decided this fourth and Clemson's gonna kick it away. 118 left in the first quarter. The score is Clemson 7, Erskine nothing. The snap is back. Gets off, gets off a weak kick. Kevin Dinkins takes a fair catch fair and catch, fumbles, fumbles the ball. The ball. It appears it's Clemson recovered by Clemson. At about the 42 yard, 47 yard line. Number 84, I believe, was for Clemson. Recovered the fumble, Patterson. By number 35, Kelvin Dinkins, it'll be first down Clemson at their 47. Patterson, a graduate of Dixie High School in 1985. Hmm. Only a Dew would have that fact. Must feel good to play on the home field again, though. Another tough pill to swallow for the, for the Erskine fleet. 
it appears that we're going to have good field position after a good stand by the defense, and the defense even has to spend more time out there now. Hand up straight up the middle, big hole, stumbles, and is brought down by number 76 for the elite Steve Arsenal. He's a 6'2", 185-pound <coughs> freshman from Ware Shoals. I tell you, where Shoals can produce some big boys. <laughs> I wonder what they feed him up at Clemson, though. That's the question. Erskine breaks out of the huddle. Still led by their starting quarterback, number 12, Harrington. This will be the last play of the first quarter. He gets the snap off with two seconds left. Hand straight up the middle. As the horn sounds, they fall together, which looks like it'll be close to the first down on the third down play. His first down, I believe, was signal. Yes, first down for Clemson as they flip sides of the field and they turn around and go the other way. First down, Clemson, and getting ready for the second quarter of play here at Henry Oaks Field in Due West, South Carolina. The Erskine College Flying Fleet against the Tigers of Clemson. Clemson's turned around and gone the other way now. They are in Erskine territory at about the 42 yard line. Harrington brings him out of the huddle. Checks his line. Pitches to his tailback coming left. Picks up a good block. Gets a good block and is met hard by and number slides out of bounds. 43 Robert Stidham and number 9 Wayne King. We bring him down right at the Erskine 35 yard line. It'll be second down in about two yards. Fresh second quarter just started with 14:34 left, and it's still seven to nothing, Clemson. With neither team really making a strong move, other than Clemson's defensive touchdown. Our Hall made a nice move to the outside, pick up a couple of good blocks from his Clemson teammates. Harrington gets his team set, takes a snap. Rolls to the right side. Pitches to number 31, Hall, who stays on his feet way up the field. He's like a flag down on the play. He gets it back to the 35 yard line, but the flag is down. Brian Burnett knocking him out of bounds. We'll have to wait and see what the call is. Erskine fans seem to think it's going to work against the Tigers. Appears to be talking to David Chapman and Robert Stidham, the captain, and it appears that the fans are maybe right. Clemson being marched back all the way, almost to the 50 yard line. We'll call it the Erskine 49. Clemson's been penalized fairly heavily in the early going tonight. Legal use of the hands from Clemson. Takes it back to the 36 yard line. Second 19. Fans still cheering on the fleet, realizing they are very much in the game and you might dare say they've dominated except for one, one sort of hard to swallow pill that happened in the first quarter when Clemson got their touchdown on a defensive side. When you're on the ground slugging it out like that, and then they come back with the big plays, that can be heartbreaking. Barry Threadgill on the right side of the line jumped but appeared to get back as Hall sticks it up the middle right into the heart of the Erskine defense, which stops him right near the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and still about 14 yards to go at the 45 yard line of Erskine. Well, the ghouls and the monsters are out tonight here. Halloween night at Due West, South Carolina. A lot of Erskine students in the, the crowd. Haven't had any trick-or-treaters knocking on the door yet, but I, uh, no I suppose they're yet. out in force tonight. I'm sure they will be. The quarterback from the shotgun stand takes back. He's got complete over there near the Erskine 30 yard line. Well, nice maybe they were calling it. Were they calling it good? Yes, the catch was inbounds. A nice catch over there by number 30. 
Collins, I believe. Again, the numbers are very hard to pick up. Clemson seeming to gain some renewed confidence in their offense. That was a strong pass play. Harrington had plenty of time and picked out his receiver nicely over near the right side. I believe we're going to check that. I think that last catch is by Hutto, number 40. Wayne King and Bruce Canada deep for college. Harrington seemed to be a little confused. He's going to take the first time out of the game for Clemson. At 12.45 in the second quarter, it's Clemson 7, Erskine nothing. It'll be first down Clemson at the Erskine 30 when we come back. Stepped up to the line and... I didn't get that. like what he saw when he set up the line last time. We'll see if the adjustments made by Clemson are going to help. Back in the shotgun. It takes Roll around plenty of time. His pressure rolls left, throws very deep. Deep throw. Oh, almost a very nice catch. That too was number 40, Hutto. He was open and it appeared a good pass would have had him. Harrington a little anxious to get it there. Overshot him a little bit. It'll be second down and 10 at the Erskine 30. A defensive stand here and to, to hold the Clemson to no points, maybe three would, would be an uplifting for the defense. They spent a lot of time on the field tonight. Maybe give the offense a spark. Clemson comes out of the huddle. Number 40, Hutto coming back out to the left side wide. Harrington up under the center this time. Checks his team. Motion. Sends number 83 Rogers to the right side, down under the center. We had motion in the backfield. Number 31 Hall, the tailback, appeared to jump. That'll cost Clemson five and take them back to their 35. It'll be second down there, 15 yards for a first. This broadcast brought to you tonight by the Erskine College television station, Channel 9 on 19 on Due West Cable. Pilot project of the SGA at Erskine College there. I think so. Really making strong strides to bring Erskine into the modern era, if you will. And this We're all excited. We're all excited about being involved with this project. Harrington drops back. He's looking down the middle and has number 84 wide open. He's rustled down by number 9, Wayne King, and number 43, Robert Stidham, at about the Erskine five-yard line. Kind of tripped down by a four of Erskine players. 43, Robert Stidham, getting up slowly on the play, but it appears to be all right. Plans for the Erskine television station in the future include more televised games, musical events, and lectures. Among other things, pet project of Erskine College. Probably some of the basketball games too, I would think. I would hope. <laughs> I Harry think you would. Harrington found his tight end Patterson, number 84, for a nice reception there. He was wide open down the middle and his first down Clemson at the five yard line. Clemson Erskine needs to make a stand here. He looks over to the end zone. Harrington has a man and appears to, appears to have thrown that one away. Dropped it in the corner of the end zone. Or maybe he had a mix-up with his player. Seemed to think he think he was going to go one way. Or he thought he was supposed to go another. I guess you could say he zigged when he should have said. <laughs> Very large wooden bar in the way of the camera here that we're going to try to correct right now. Erskine fans rallying in support of their team. They want a defensive stand here. <laughs> I I'm not sure how that happened. Uh, there's an incomplete pass, and Clemson seems to have lost a yard, and it's, it's gone back to their six-yard line. <laughs> but it'll it'll be second down and five from there. A little bit of goal line defense first in college. Oh, uh, Pitch gets away from the tailback. Right down. The fumble is loose. They say Clemson's got it. It appeared Erskine had fell on it. It's like but Dave number, Chapman had come up with the football originally, but... Number 12, Harrington, the quarterback, seemed to have scampered back on the ball. Still a staggering loss for Clemson, though. We'll bring it all the way back to their 16-yard line, where it'll be third down there. 
Tubby in on the play. Looks like he had that football though, I don't know. Must have lost it in the shuffle though. Third down and about 16 to go. Now if they'd shake that football a little bit differently, it wouldn't be so hard to hold on to. <laughs> Basketball for half Alden? Perhaps. Harrington fakes a pitch and rolls right looking for a looking receiver. Looking deep to the end zone, he, he has right receiver touchdown, Clemson. For a touchdown by Clemson. That looks to be number 84, Patterson, on a nice pass pattern. Harrington found him in the quarter of the end zone for another six for little, Clemson. A little play action fake there by the Clemson quarterback through the first defense to the left side. Patterson's seen that end zone many times before. He was a very valuable player when he was at Dixie High School. He's proved to be so far for Clemson tonight. Kind of takes you back. Um, Number eight, oh, Corbett will try the extra point. The snap is down and it oh. appears to be up. Very long kick and good. That's one for the replays. 43, Rob Stidham hurtling the defensive and offensive line. Looks like he just put a foot on the back of his player and leaped across trying to get to the punt. Novel play. It makes it 14 to nothing with 11.02 left in the second quarter. Erskine playing tough though. They're not out of Erskine this by who, any means. Erskine who started off strong needs to get something going to instill a little confidence in themselves if nothing else. Touchdown before halftime would be nice. Three or four touchdowns <laughs> before halftime would be nice. <laughs> Number eight, Corbett's going to do the kicking for Clemson. Calvin Deacon to receive. Calvin Deacon, he's joined by other Erskine players. Wayne King, wide to the right. Eric Peterson is to the right. The kick appears to be going to Kelvin Deacon. He feels it. No, it goes to Wayne King, who takes it at about the 15 yard line. up the inside. He moves Fumble. Up. Fumbles to a Clemson player who catches it in the air and falls forward to about the 33-yard line of Erskine, and Clemson appears to have wonderful field position yet They may again. be saying he was... First down, Clemson, the Erskine 33-yard line, but they're saying the forward progress is no good. They're going to take it back to about the 38. And that hurts, Clem that hurts Erskine real bad. Kind of a replay of what we saw earlier. Another sore pill to Salo, and the defense has to, has to spend yet more time on the field. Could be a very key play for Clemson because they're in such good field position now. And a 21 nothing lead at halftime would, I'm sure they would feel very good about. Be comfortable with going to the locker room for Clemson. Harrington brings them out of the huddle. He sends number 82 Thornton wide to the right, hands off straight at the middle to Hall. Dives forward for about three yards, gets it across the 35-yard line. The other Clemson football team had a strong game against Wake Forest today. They, they were playing at Clemson. <laughs> but tonight in Due West, it's all club football. They were playing at Wake Forest, and it wasn't a real strong performance. They didn't. I'm sorry, they played at Clemson, which makes it worse. <laughs> Uh, Gamecocks look very good today against an opponent who seemed to be very difficult for the Tigers to handle. The Wolfpack from North Carolina State, South Carolina won 48 to nil. This from a resident of Columbia, South Carolina. <laughs> we'll be taking a poll this afternoon. Any of, any of those who can do to see. Goes back, breaks the tackle, let go. comes to the left side, breaks the second tackle, and finally brought down. Any of those of you who want to can write in and guess which team Allen pulls for. <laughs> <laughs> Number 59 was Brian O'Dell on the hit there for Erskine, joined by some of his teammates, whom I was too slow to pick up. Sorry, guys. At 9-19 in the second quarter, Clemson's leading 14 to nothing. I just can't stress enough the beauty of the weather we're having. This is very untypical for Halloween. Quite. Nice warm evening here in West, South Carolina. Perfect football weather.
Harrington drops back. Number 40 long, nobody's picking up. He cuts back the inside. Middle. Oh! A strong Damn. pass, just a little too high. Number 40, Hutto, was wide open. Number 40 for Clemson. Didn't have anybody within 10 yards of him on that last play. Number 93, Bowie. Good for Erskine College. Number 93, Bowie was outstretched a little and couldn't quite hang on. That'll make it fourth down for Clemson. At about their 36-yard line, and it looks like they're going to drop back to punt again. The southpaw for Clemson is going to do the kicking, number three, Arbana. No pun intended, southpaw, Clemson. A high spiral kick that doesn't turn over again. Kelvin Dinkin makes a fair catch and hangs on this time at the Erskine 21. Let's see if the defense can't get a little break and get off the field and see if the offense can't put a little drive together before halftime. Erskine fleet offense taking the field. Erskine's so starting to get some real confidence behind this defensive squad. You have to take into consideration the fluke play. They've held their own tonight. It was about a 20-yard punt with no return by the Clemson kicker. Robert Stidham brings him out of the huddle. They'll put it in play from about their 21. He hands off the coin up the middle. He stumbles forward for a couple of yards. Fits it up to about the 25-yard line. So far this season, Erskine has been scoreless. So a touchdown right now would probably lift the spirits a whole lot. Even more than than usual. Number 96, Chris Coffin is coming wide to the right. Robert Stenham steps him out of the huddle. Barks out the signals. Appears to be a busted play, a fumble at the snap. We'll see who got it shortly. I think Robert Stidham fell back on his own fumble. It appears that he did. It'll be third down, Erskine. He gained it at about the line of scrimmage. Maybe even gained a yard. Third down and about five to go at the 27-yard line. Erskine fans not to be undaunted here. They're still strongly supporting their team. You gotta love them. Wayne King, the outside kick. Robert Stidham pitches wide to David Coyne, who runs strongly up the left side. Plunges across the 30-yard line at Clemson and picks up the first down for Erskine. Knights it all the way up to about the 33-yard line. First down for the fleet, and this appears to be what Erskine needs. Maybe some strong ground game. Give the defense a little rest, which is almost irrelevant because most people play defense and offense. Stidham breaks him out of the huddle. Chris Coughlin wide to the right. Dinkins and Coyne in the backfield. Step back. Strap up the middle. Play play up the middle. Strong drive. Middle brought down by number 64 S. Bynum for Clemson. Wayne King is out wide to the right this time. Stidham hands Stidham off the coin. He's stuck up immediately. Appears to have lost a yard back to the Erskine. It's like Rob got rid of that ball just in time on that play. He was brought down as soon as the handoff was made. It'll be third down and about, about nine, the Erskine 35. This is a big conversion here Erskine needs to get. Blown dead in the grass. A strong rush by Clemson's number 28, T Banner. Stidham is right 
wrapped up and drugged all the way back to the uh, Erskine 22 yard line. It'll be fourth down and a country mile. <laughs> Erskine will punt. Wayne King back Number to the kicker. Number 23 R round three back for The snap is a low end over end cut. Round three gets it. Oh, where is he from? David Chapman's there to make the tackle. David Chapman's really got it down the field quick tonight. He's showing surprising intensity getting after the Number 23 for Clemson. Clemson. special teams. Number 23 for Clemson Roundtree recovered his own fumble. At the Erskine 42 yard line, it'll be first down Clemson. And again, the defense is on the field. They've got to be getting tired. Keeping in mind, most of the time the defense have been on the field, they've been in their own territory, which makes it even tougher. Erskine sets up. Erskine plunges it up the middle with what looked to be Hall, who's been their main runner thus far. Gained about a yard, it'll be second down and nine and about the 39 yard line. Coach Ashley signaling in some plays to Wayne King on that. Erskine, I'm sorry, the perhaps point. proposing a new defensive setup. Second down will be from the 44 yard line, not the 39. A little more than four minutes left in the second quarter. Score still Clemson 14, Erskine 0. Flag down on the play before the snap. Erskine fans appeased by that last ball. Four minutes till halftime at Henry Oak Stadium in Due West, South Carolina. Fans still continuing to pour into the stadium. Uh oh, and the 31 breaks free, brought down by the 31 Hall. Bruce Canada on the tackle. Ripped it straight up the middle all the way to the Erskine 34 yard line. Strong, strong play by Bruce Canada. Thompson moving the ball well again. Picks up another first down. And with 3.40 left to go in the second quarter, Erskine really cannot afford any more points on the board for Clemson. They could get in the locker room now, down 14 points. I think they could come out sparkling. Maybe get a break or two and look good. Harrington drops back the pass. Looks and long. Has... Oh! There was nobody in the same area code as Patterson for Clemson. He was wide open and obviously smelled a little pay dirt. He couldn't hang on. That's that's when you're racking up your stats before you get them there. I think I think he'll catch something in the locker room after this game. But looked, looked to be a sure six points and couldn't hang on. <laughs> you know, then again, maybe he just heard the footsteps coming. Harrington showing a very impressive and extremely accurate arm tonight. That He's pass was the holes in the Erskine defense. That pass was right on the money. and bringing them out of the huddle for their second down, 10 yard to go play. Eye backfield. He gets a little play action and drop backs. Looks again over the middle for number 40, Hutto. Almost a great catch right at the goal line. Chris Canada covering on the play. Chris Cothran was also back there to help. Hutto had a step on Canada. The uh, pass was a little bit long, but that was almost another seven for Clemson. You have to, you have to wonder. Erskine defense has been surviving on just a few, few close ones. We have. Yes, they have. If we can make it into the locker room at halftime, make some adjustments, and come out roaring in the second. Clemson receiver was a little better guarded that time, made it a little tougher for Harrington to pick out a receiver. 
pass was still good and accurate, just a little bit long. Excellent try by Hutto. You have to appreciate what Don Allen, head coach of Clemson, has been doing. Clemson team is well coached, well fundamental team to be a club football team. They Third and ten again from the Erskine 35. Clemson seems determined to put a few more points on the board, having gone for the end zone in the last two attempts. Carrington sends his wide receiver in motion back to the left, gives a play action pass, throws deep again for oh, great defensive play by the strong hit, strong hit by Bruce Kennedy. Bruce kind of jarring the ball loose there, but what looked to be a good catch couldn't hang on after the strong hit. It'll be fourth down from the 35. Clemson may try a field goal here. Canada beginning to make a defensive show the last few, few plays here. Freshman in a Greer, South Carolina. He's 5'10", 155 pounds, but he's hitting like it appears as though Clemson is going to go for it on 4th and 10. Number one, Yako in motion. Harrington drops back, another play action pass. Drops back, he's number right one in the corner. Throws wide. A great catch by the Clemson receiver, but he was ruled out of bounds. And Erskine will have three minutes to get something going and hopefully get something on the board. They'll take over at their 35 yard line. Roar of appreciation from the Erskine crowd. Once again, a fairly impressive stop by the defense of Erskine. I think they're waiting on halftime. They may be needing a break. I believe that Gatorade's going to be good in the locker room. Uh, the offense needs to find a spark from somewhere. They've relied so far on the tough running of David Coyne. Did him back to the ball. Oh, fumble. Did him fumbled again at the line of scrimmage. There seems to be a shuffle. Seems to have been a lot of miscues and mistiming between the center and the quarterback yes, tonight for Erskine College. Um, Quite a few. But then again, we are dealing with the fact that this pair has not worked together much in the past couple weeks. They've been really working hard to get it down, but you know, everything changes when that you know, opening whistle sounds. So. However, both times Erskine's fumbled the ball, they Gained a yard. It's <laughs> first and not not lacking in hustle and intensity tonight. That's for sure. They just haven't had the breaks. Robert Stidham recovered his own fumble. Moved it up to the 36. It's second down and nine. He turns and pitches again to David Coyne. Coyne. Coyne looking for the the sideline. Breaks one tackle. Spins through another one. Get Ball hard down about the 37 yard line. Dave Coyne, Lake Wales, Florida. Strong, strong run. He was hit hard by number 28 for Clemson Burns. Made a nice spin move and fell forward for another yard. It'll be third and about eight from Erskine's 38. This will be a big third down conversion. Erskine good on the first couple third down conversions. Hasn't been successful lately. A big play here would help greatly. A minute and 45 left to a halftime. Stidham brings him out of the huddle. Split backfield, dropping back. Stidham. Throws a short skip pass, pass over to Kelvin Dinkins, who catches the ball. Kelvin Dinkins stepping out of bounds. Brought down by number 44 for Clemson. About the 48-yard line. That'd be Beard. 38-yard line. Tried to give him a first down right there. Probably got back to the line of scrimmage on that screen pass. Makes it fourth down, about seven yards. Clock stopped at 129 left in the first half. Falls at the 38-yard line. Ray King is going to have to kick it away and give it to Clemson again. A low hard kick to the right side. Picked up by number 19 for Clemson. Oh, I thought it was 19. Number 18. Good play by Bob Elliott out of junior of Gastonia, North Carolina, for the Flying Fleet. That return went for about four years, four yards by O'Neill. And three plays and the Erskine defense is back on the field again. Gibson has 
Spartanburg in on defense. Arrington dropping past the pass, have a blocker, he's in trouble Under now. pressure. Scrambles away, throws a shot downfield. Oh, once again, Erskine has dodged a bullet. Mr. Harrington may have a talk with his receivers when he gets back into the locker room. He's thrown some bullets that have not been able to be hung on. That one by number one for Clemson, Yockley, Yokel. You'd wonder who put the better on the football tonight. That thing's been sliding, slipping, and bouncing around all over the place. Clemson receivers aren't having any trouble getting open, but they just can't hang on to the ball. That incompletion makes it second down and about 10. Ball's on the 39-yard line of Clemson. Less than a minute left. Clemson seems determined not to quit. They want some more points before halftime. Maybe for the Erskine fans, hopefully they'll make a mistake and throw one to a red jersey. <coughs> Maybe we'll do a little better at catching it than the Clemson receivers have. Go the other way with it. High school weekend here at Erskine College, due west of South Carolina, and with a good crowd of future Erskine students, you can only hope that somewhere sitting out there in the crowd is a future running back, future lineman, future star of Erskine Club football. We've got a good crowd of some 250 people here this weekend. One of the biggest turnouts ever for an Erskine high school weekend. Club football has been good for Erskine and good for Dixie. A lot of, a lot of improvements and publicity has come out of this for Erskine College and Dixie High School for the new club football program. On defense, Harrington fading back. A flag on the play. Harrington's back again. This time it's hung on. Two by Patterson for Clemson, number 84. Or maybe, yes, that was 84, Patterson. Out of bounds right at midfield for the... Clemson Tigers. Harrington's been very accurate all night. It's just been a matter of when his receivers could hang on. He's picking apart the Erskine, the Erskine secondary. Sort of like Todd Ellis does, his opponents. <laughs> that call is offsides against Clemson, so the nice catch and pass will be negated and it'll be marched back to Clemson's 35. We'll put it in play third and about 17. I must agree completely. Alan, that call about Ellis was completely offsides. <laughs> Harrington in a shotgun formation again, looking to pass. Drops back, looking to the right, number 40. Hutto launches a Under pressure, bomb down the up. right side. Canada, who came up caught. with it? Somebody's got it. A completion. <laughs> Canada come up with the football, but the officials are saying. Well, it was either Clemson football. He wrestled it away after the catch was made. The referee's not real anxious to let us know what's going on, but it appears that it was a catch, a nice catch. Maybe the, maybe the Clemson receivers hurt us, giving them, giving them trouble up here. That up. Well, far be it from us to imply the Clemson players can't hang on to the football. <laughs> that pass by Harrington covered almost some, some odd 50 yards in his march. Clemson all the way into scoring territory. The Erskine 25 where it's first down, and they're not Harrington through. Fades back. Looks, he looks he's again. got a receiver. Oh. Oh. Once again, just outside the fingers of the Clemson receivers. Very scary. That one was down near the goal line. Skinny, you got to wonder if these Clemson players aren't smelling touchdown quite before the football gets there. Ten seconds left in the first half. Number 40, Hutto, couldn't hold on to that one. Clemson may try one more pass play. Or may try and kick a field goal here. Looks like they're going to try one more play. 
with a pass to the end zone or a sideline pattern. Looks like they should have time for one more. Harrington is up under the center. Barks out the signal. He's got two men right to the left. Hutto cuts to the end He rolls side. wide to the left. Harrington goes rolling. Out of bounds with three seconds left, bringing up the last play of the first half. Very, very good play by the Clemson quarterback, Harrington. Stalling, seeing that he had nobody open, tucked it under and decided to give his field goal kicker a chance to add three more. As he, he ran it all the way down to the 24-yard line of Erskine before running out of bounds, and now, now his field goal kicker has a chance to tack on three more. Clemson quarterback Harrington, very impressive tonight. Very, very impressive. Number, He's got a real arm on him there. Number eight, Corbett, to do the kicking. 43, Rob Stidham through the line strong. The kick was right on line, but a little short as the buzzer for the first half sounds. And you got to take your hats off or helmets, whichever be it, to the Erskine defense. They've held together real well. And other than a fluke play, which happened on the defense, and Clemson managed to get seven points, Erskine has only managed one only giving Clemson one touchdown in the first half, which has got to be a, a bright spot, if not in this game, later on down the road. I'd like to congratulate Rob Stidham. He kind of exemplifies the Erskine ideal. He's He's been fighting his way over the line on those <laughs> kicks every chance he's had. And one can only hope for a better second half of the Erskine College Flying Fleet. And we will be back for the second half in just a few minutes. Welcome back to second half of action here, Erskine College versus Clemson University, Henry C. Oates Sports Pavilion. Here on the luscious campus of Dixie High School in Due West, South Carolina. Clemson enjoying a 14 to nothing lead coming into the second half of action, but Erskine's made some adjustments and is looking forward to a strong rally in the second half. The kick is up. Kelvin Dinkins on the reception, fumbles. Picks up his own fumble. Up to the 35. Fine return by Dinkins. Brought down by number 38, E. McGraw for the Clemson Tigers. I'd like to thank Chip Shear tonight, who's running the clock in the press box for the Erskine Clemson Tigers game. I talked to some of the Erskine players at halftime. They said they too were very, very pleased with the defensive performance. But they think they needed to get their offense going, and they thought stopping a flea flicker play by Erskine College. And Robert Stidham looks Stidham long. long. He's got Eric. Oh, Bain. intercepted. Number 23, all round free on the reception of the pass but to Eric Peterson. Eric Peterson was open, and Robert Stidham couldn't quite lead him in up. Little dipsy doo razzle dazzle from the Erskine team, but looks like the trick was on them. Erskine said, in order to get their offense going, just some plain old blocking on the front line and stopping the penetration by Clemson. Both, both Robert Stidham and Dave Coyne agreed that was the solution, but maybe they changed their minds a little and decided to wrinkle it up a little. This broadcast is the sole property of Erskine College and the Erskine College Flying Fleet. Any rebroadcast production or viewing without the express written consent of Erskine College is strictly prohibited. Good. <laughs> he loves saying that. That run by a Clemson tailback pushed the ball up about six yards. It'll be second down and four. The ball is on the, we're waiting on Chip, the 30 yard line. Austin <coughs> player getting up slowly after that last play. 13.46 in the third quarter. 14 to nothing Clemson Tigers over the Erskine College Flying Fleet. <laughs> Big 
Barry Threadgill coming up off the field slowly after that play. Barry is a freshman for the Flying Fleet out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Brings him out of the hole, little eye backfield. Yoke in motion. Hand off. Oh, brought down from behind. Number 59, Brian O'Dell on the tackle. Also, number 70, David Chapman. Bring up uh, second and 10. First and 10 for Clemson. First down. Two green rolls out to about the 42 yard line. Stumbles out to about the 46 yard line for the Clemson Tigers. That was a big third down conversion by Clemson. Erskine needed to stop him there and maybe get possession of the ball back. But some tough running by Clemson got him the first down. Number 12, Harrington looking around. Harrington back in his. Low snap, in the 31, breaks a tackle, swings to the outside, he's still running, cuts back up to the inside. Brought down by number 51. Some good blocking on that number play by the... Barry Threadgill, who was shaking up earlier on the play. Some good blocking by the Clemson line on that play. Brian Burnett, number 63 for the fleet, almost had him in the backfield back there. Made a Bob Elliott walking over to the sidelines. Number 69, Scott Kitchens into the game. 69, Scott Kitchens, a freshman for the flying <laughs> fleet out of North Augusta, Georgia. those car heels today, Alan. Hancock has no comment for that statement. I have, I have a few things to say about the Tar Heels. But being a native I of South they Carolina, win. we probably don't want to hear I that. hope they win next weekend. <laughs> They will play uh, Clemson, nonetheless. Harrington inside, gets the snap, fades back, he's looking long, has the man open on the right sideline, breaks the tackle, brought down, knocked out of bounds by 69, the freshman Scott Kitchen. Kitchen's just into the game already making a mark. 
exactly 11 to 11 in the third quarter here at the Harry C. Egg Stadium in Due West, South Carolina. I believe Scott Kitchens is down on the play. We have a player down for Erskine College, apparently suffering a leg injury. Don Allen, the coach of Clemson, and Robin Ashley, the coach of Erskine College, are out there looking at the player. The ambulance is coming around the field right now. Mark, Mark Wilson is sprinting behind the ambulance trying to aid the down play. Well, Alan, looks like we're going to have to take a cut and pay over that one. The down, the down Erskineite is hard to define because his body. number is pressed up against the turf. We could tell you who he's not, but... <laughs> This is, this is not the first Erskine player to leave in an ambulance. Robert Stidham was banged up two weeks ago against Coastal Carolina, and he's back playing again tonight. We have a report from our roving reporter, just for this bro, that the down Erskineite is Eric Peterson, 85. But that is hard to discern, considering the fact that 85 is standing on the sideline. Since Eric Peterson is, a, is alive and well on the sidelines, I guess that I guess that wouldn't be him down. Excuse me, that's 89 on the no. sidelines. The speculation continues at Henry C. Oates Field in Due West, South Carolina. As to who the mystery hurt player could be for Erskine College, we are scanning the rosters now, trying to determine that fact, and we'll we'll let you know as soon as the determination is made. <laughs> One of those can play is obviously falling asleep. <laughs> I'm breaking the action here at Henry C. Oates Athletic Stadium. Time for us to thank the following people for their support of Erskine Club football. Indeed a good idea, Mr. Ellington. We'd like to thank Kennedy's Exxon in Due West, South Carolina. The Due West Oil Mill. Sprouts Incorporated. The famous of the Y Dance and the best lemonade in the West Plaxico Drug Store. We'd also like to thank Wofford Textiles. And McLean Builders. Some individuals who have really helped out a lot with the Erskine Club football. Mr. Tracy Carter. Of Dixie High School. And Mr. William Hall. Mr. Monty Woolley. <laughs> Good. Colonel John A. Simpson. Mr. John McDill. Mrs. Gloria Bell. Mr. Dave Delgado. Mr. Robin Ashley, Mr. Steve Dunlap, and Mr. Alan Ashley, along with all the Erskine, Erskine College, College students. students. <laughs> uh, we'll take a break here while they remove the Erskine player <laughs> from the Henry C. O. Athletic Stadium playing field. Oh, we're on. Okay. Uh, the broadcasters for tonight's game were provided by Erskine College's television station here inside the Plush Wellett Studios of Dixie High School. We would like to thank, again, Alden Hancock on camera, Chip Shearer. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't ever, don't ever. I'm out. You know that, and I know that. You're Yes, Chip, we are. Chip Shearer, right. if we could swing it around to get a picture we, we of Chip. We could probably Chisper, get a picture of Chip. Chisper, 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 Chisper. Here. Unless that big wooden pole's in the way. No, we got him. No, that wooden pole, the wooden pole is Chip Shearer. We got Chisper. Chisper. Who? We didn't Who? get Chip Shearer. Back up, back up here, back up here. Okay, yeah. we're back over here. It appears as though we hear noise from Baker City Oaks Field here in the West South Carolina. Where the injured player is now being removed. Due to the violent nature of the aforementioned player being removed, we are not allowed to show you that action at this time. However, we will be cutting back to football here at Henry C. Oates Stadium in just a couple of seconds. 
There's not any previous. We still have yet to determine the nature and the identity of the mysterious player. But he is leaving on a stretcher, and our fans can only hope for the best. And we're back with action at Henry C. Oates Field in Due West, South Carolina. I think, as I remember, it was Clemson's ball. It's first down. Harrington looks for the snap. Man in motion is number 40, Hutto. Harrington drops Harrington back. Drops back. Looking deep over the oh, middle. Oh, mm. almost picked off by number 21, Bruce Canada. Canada. Bruce Canada on the play. Derek Ellington has now changed his job from broadcaster to roving reporter and is down discussing with P.D. Davenport who the injured player was. And so we'll know I that. I think I hear every minutes. bit of his 6'8 body banging up the steps now, so we should know shortly who the injured Erskineite is. Bad news for the Erskine College flying fleet. Robert Stidham, who was playing quarterback, was injured. He hyperextended his knee and is being transported to Abbeville Memorial Hospital. We'll have more details as they become available. But don't hold your breath because we don't have a phone up here. <laughs> I was saying before, Robert Sidham has left in an ambulance for four, and now he's, he's left in one again. Last time he stopped the ambulance, got out, and came on even to try a field goal. He even got back in the game. He's a tough cookie. I'm sure he'll be all right. I would hate to consider this as a pattern forming though. That is going to hurt the fleet's offense. Will be interesting to see who steps in for quarterback as Robert Stidham himself was stepping in for Bruce Jimmy Campbell, Temple. Bruce has seen some action at backup quarterback. I believe so. in the warm-ups, old Bruce took a few snaps. and One can only speculate at this point, right, Alan? One can. One can only speculate. Ten, ten minutes and 20 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Been moving on the line. Terry's in quick. Clemson player. Clemson ball carrier gets it almost back to the original line of scrimmage at the number 30. T. Collins makes a strong move to the inside. To brought down, be brought the down by the Erskine College flying fleet. The Erskine 28 yard line. It'll be second down at about 10. Nine minutes and 44, 43, 42 seconds left. In the third quarter, Clemson on the drive, hands it straight up the middle, a up huge middle. hole. He's got daylight, he's got to beat one Touchdown. person, he does Clemson all the way into University. the end zone. A lovely run by, I think, number 31 Hall, who's been their, their star out of the backfield all night. Clemson Made his... will attempt the extra point conversion. Score is 20 to nothing, Clemson Tigers. He made his way all the way through the Erskine secondary into the touchdown and <laughs> nice run after the catch by I Mark believe Hall. the catch. The kick by number eight is up. It's long enough. It's good. Twenty-one to nothing. Clemson Tigers. Corbin has been college point play. Seems that Erskine has never really recovered from that first first blow when the ball was bottled out of Rob Stidham's hands into the hands of a Clemson Tiger player. Once again commenting on the hyper extension of Robert Stidham's Erskine knee fans as he was taken away in an ambulance. Erskine fans, Erskine fans greatly concerned over Yelling there. to the press by asking for information on their friend and classmate. Once again stressing the unity and closeness of Erskine College, the Erskine family, if you will. Corbett's been perfect on his PATs for Clemson tonight, and he steps up to kick it away again. The point afters have been very good, too. Yeah, sure. 
Kelvin Dinkins running hard, holding on to the football, gets his forward progress all the way up over the 30-yard line of Erskine. Brought down by number 51. Kelvin Dinkins is slow getting up on the play. He was apparently shaken up. Number 13, Dave Coyne, is checking into him. Ironically, Coyne is also, when he's not playing club football, a trainer for Erskine College, helping such sports as volleyball and basketball. Number 51 for Clemson on that tackle was Jay Harper. <laughs> Something you don't see much <laughs> in college football. No. Edwards steps up. over the ball. It's interesting to note Bruce Kennedy is the quarterback. Brings it out to Dave Coyne. Stopped at the 38-yard line. I guess you might say one speculated right a while ago. When, when you must, one, one must say that. Yes, one must. One must say that. He may opt to, as he did, and be correct. Well, one might be opt to one speculate, might, one but then much. Actually, one didn't three did. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> and with 8.25 left in the third Another truism from quarter. Mr. Knight. Bruce Canada. Canada the calling snap. the signals. Quick Canada hand off to Kevin Diggins. He's got some room, but brought down by... He's banged up with a with a 33 foul. ends Cooley with a flag on the play. It may be piling on by Clemson. Unsportsmanlike conduct by Clemson. A definite asset to Erskine College, the ball will. Which will give Erskine their the biggest field. gain since the first quarter. Their last 15 yard penalty. I, I guess. <laughs> we don't, sorry we don't have many stats to give you. We'd like to thank uh, PD Patrick Davenport for not giving stats tonight. <laughs> Total offense for Erskine in the first half was, as PD said, a lot. Canada pitches back to David Coyne, who turns and looks to throw and lets a long one go to Wayne King, who is real open. Flag on the play, another flag on the play. Could be a late hit. It appears as though we have a roughing the passer. Yes, we do against Clemson. And another flag down at the line of Two scrimmage. flags on the play. We'll have to wait and sort them out. But Dave Coyne was definitely hit late on that play after he'd released the ball. <clears throat> it Look appears as though it's going to be an King. offsetting penalty. I think we had holding on the offensive line and roughing the passer. It's interesting to note that the holding penalty came after the pass was released by Coyne toward Wayne King. The pass was broken up by the Clemson defender. They're calling an illegal man downfield against Erskine College and unnecessary roughness or roughing the passer against Clemson and they'll turn and mark it off the other way and Erskine will benefit by 10 yards on a 15 minus 5 yard penalty which will move the ball all the way down oh about 35 of Clemson and Erskine is in their territory again and on the charge. Erskine is in good field position as Number 96, Chris Cochran, comes into the game, leaving number nine, Wayne King, the ineligible man downfield on that play. Mr. Canada seems to be doing a good job behind center. One can only wonder if the official will pick up his flag to the left at midfield. One, one, can, yes, one yes. can wonder. Yeah, one, one could wonder that. Yes, the flag was retrieved by the official. Three, three, three <laughs> could wonder. Yeah. Lots could wonder. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm sure there were a lot of fans down there. In fact, wonderment is spreading among the crowd like wildfire. One is glad it's not freezing cold up here like it was the last game. One, one could 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 be glad of that. A cry from the fan has a has a valid point that I, that roughing the passer should draw an automatic first down for Erskine College, and we'll see. The so officials are conversing at midfield about that point right now as Bruce Canada, the captain on the field, briefly talks to the official and heads back to the huddle. 
as number 96 Chris Cothran returns to the game. What Erskine College might ask needs to be done. Here's just arrived. penalties have marred most of the game tonight, but all in all, one must agree that it has been a well-fought contest, which we've not seen the end of. Looks like a broken play. Canada wanted to go right, and the left guard wanted to pull, and they tackled each other. Once again, a miscue. There's been a lot of trouble tonight between the center and the quarterback on the snaps. Canada fell forward about a foot. Be second and nine at the 33. Second and First a long nine. Canada. Which is a term I never understood. Nine is pretty much nine. Seems like a long nine would be ten. Another fumble between the center and the quarterback, and it appears that Erskine center has got back on his own fumble. One can only speculate and question why Alan Hancock continues to ramble as such. <laughs> Number 96, Chris Crawford, sets up wide for the flying fleet as Ruth Canada prepares to take the snap from center. Six minutes and 30 seconds. Pitches outside to Coyne. Coyne cuts back inside. Coyne brought down by number 41, Chandler from Clemson Tigers. Erskine's only trace of offense thus far has been Dave Coyne and his strength out of the backfield. Coyne's exhibiting excellent running speed off the... Yes. Off the snap as we prepare to go to a... Fourth down fourth five. five. This Erskine is, is going for the ball. This is a big play from Erskine. He's out to Coyne. Right to Dave Coyne. Coyne bumps into Monticelli Kevin Diggins and pushes forward. But it falls short of the first down as the teams prepare to switch offenses and defenses. Coy looked as if he wanted to throw. Number 18 O'Neill and 94 Murray made that decision. There was, there was perhaps an option off the play, but he did bump into Dinkins as he was coming to the right side. Clemson will take over. At about the 30 yard line, first and 10 for the Tigers. Erskine back on defense, a position well known to them tonight. Flag on the play. 31 Hall with some room, but brought down. Nice play by 21. Canada's really exemplifying himself. Chill. How do you exemplify yourself? What Derek meant to say, I think, is Canada making a very impressive showing tonight. I think they, the home audience understood what I was talking about. One can only speculate. They, they haven't for the year and a half that you've been here, so <laughs> why they would start now? <laughs> Speaking at least for the basketball team, we have another member note, up here. I think he'll vouch for Interesting to note the wit and humor are circulating. Oh, we had movement on the Clemson movement line. He tried three to play flags off. Go flying through the air. But all sports fans would know that it doesn't matter if the defensive moves. He moved. You were caught. It'll cost you five, buddy. Cost you five, Betty, is the attitude in the press box tonight. Is that's gonna 
take the ball back to the 20 yard line of Clemson. It'll be first and 20. 436 left. First and 20 on the 20. 21 to nothing at Clemson Tigers as the Erskine College Flying Fleet again assume the defensive posture. That play went for almost back to the original line of scrimmage. <clears throat> three, yard, maybe. three yard gain from Clemson on the play. Three minutes and 50 seconds left in the third quarter. Clemson 21, Erskine 0. Looks like an option left. He pitches oh, back pitches to the side. He goes to the sideline. It was brought down by number Hall on the carry. Nice play by 31 Hall. Down by Hall number 76, Austin Hall, and number nine, Wayne King. He gets it up past the original line of scrimmage and gains probably seven yards to make it about third and seven. On the James Daniels, another one of our convincing Harris tonight on the line, along with 41, Barry Threadgill, 76, Steve Arsenault. Seventy David Chapman. Fifty nine Brian O'Dell. Ball up the middle. Breaks tackle. Runs to the right side. He's got room, but brought down by number thirty six Mike Garofalo. Garofalo on the tackle. Good run by the running back Hall there. Broke several tackles all the way down to the 45 yard line. He took it all the way into Erskine territory. It'll be a first down for Clemson with 314 left in the third quarter. Harrington running an impressive attack on this series. Harrington Gives back, play looking play. he has, oh, short play. Mixed up a receiver, looked like he was throwing to number 80, Brooks. He came out of the backfield. Coach Ashley signaling in the <laughs> defensive center. Obviously upset there was not an interception on that play. Your announcers for tonight are supplied by the Erskine College student body and are paid by absolutely no one. If but you if you would like, like to improve the quality of the before mentioned broadcast, please support the Erskine College television station. Harrington looks deep, services. he's got his man. It, no, he was called out of bounds. A nice catch. He but was a couple yards wide of that play. Number 83, Rogers. Running through the second row of the visitor side bleachers when he made the catch. He was out of bounds. Number 83, Rogers, a backup receiver for Clemson. 27, Levi out of the game. Was out of bounds, but, but he caught it. Which, it was an excellent catch, with the exception of the fact it was out of bounds. Hand off, he's got room. Brought down by five, six, seven Erskine players. Everyone got in on that one. I thought William Perry had graduated from Clemson, but it appears not because I think that was him running the ball up the middle. <laughs> a huge running back for Clemson. Drug several of the Erskine players. Looked like he just wrapped his fingers around the ball. <laughs> carried it as they broke. say. <laughs> as they the say, like a bread loaf. But held on and took it all the way down to the Erskine 29. Before being mauled by a gang of Erskine College flying fleet football players. It'll be first and ten with nearly two minutes left in the third quarter. Clemson marching again, obviously still wanting more points. Harrison gets a play action fake, turns to the option. 
Pitches back to Hall, who breaks Hall two going tackles. Out. He has he's got room. one man to beat. Oh, brought down short of the goal. He's tripped nice up. Nice play by number nine, Wayne King, to save the touchdown he's for Christian College. Saved him seven points that time because Hall, Hall saw daylight on that one was gone, but Wayne King made an excellent play to he, save a touchdown. He was definitely in zone bound, but was tripped up, and it'll be spotted about the five-yard line of Erskine. First down for Clemson and goal to go with a minute and 18 seconds left in the third quarter. A touchdown, Clemson Tigers. It appeared as though he was hit by Scott Kitchens, number 69 at the line. Too short, too late. Good but, try, Kitchen on the play. Touchdown, Clemson, bringing the score 27 to nothing. Clemson Tigers. That Clemson touchdown sets up for the point after attempt. That touchdown by Clemson was by Brooks, a backup running back, who was in perhaps giving Hall a breather and picks up a touchdown for his record. Number eight, Corbett, to do the kicking. He's been perfect tonight. It's up and misses this one for the first one. This one's been over to the side. Thank you, Jinx Team Allen. Pulled this one a little left. He was he was three for three before then. Now, uh, once again, the broadcasters have jinxed the player on the field by complimenting on their perfect record. Score now, Clemson 27, Erskine zero, with a minute and three seconds left to go in the third quarter. Erskine sets up and prepares for the kickoff reception. front line of the kickoff team is led in the middle by number 50, John Adams from Lawrence High School. 69, Scott Kitchens on the right side with number 71, 71 Dan, Dan Myers, Myers, better known as Beer Wolf, Wolf to Erskineites. He'll be on the right side of the line. On the far left appears to be number 57, John Seawright. Kevin Nichols takes the ball, comes up the right side, wrestled out of bounds by a horde of Clemson football players, led by number 28, T. Byrne, and number 26, K. Gilstrap. Once again, Clemson Tigers literally twisting the tongues of the commentators of tonight's game. Number 65 was the other person on the front line for Erskine that time. He's a 5'11", 200-pound junior out of Greenville, Stacy Williams. Brian O'Dell on the line. College gets into the top. Sets up. Canada's back. Gets to Coyne. Coyne with a good tackle. Bruce Canada spinning. Throws. Hot. Beautiful reception by Wayne King off the hurry pass from Bruce Canada. Canada felt the pressure on that one, but lost a beauty to Wayne King. Nice pass. Good blocking inside. Had good protection, but kind of rushed to get that one away. And Wayne King with a nice diving reception. So Erskine far, Erskine really needed that. So far, Erskine has really managed to supplement their quarterbacks as they as they have been hurt, various had various injuries. Canada, a freshman, showed a good poise on that completion. 30 seconds left. Hands off to Dinkins, who's dropped about a two-yard gain on the play. Erskine would really like to get some points on the board and give their offense a little confidence going into two very tough finishing games of their schedule. Including As homecoming against Appalachian State University, which will be here at Henry C. Oates Stadium. The end of the third quarter, we have Clemson 27, Erskine 0. Loudly supporting their team. Capacity crowd here tonight. Henry C. O. Stadium to see the Erskine College flying fleet against the Tigers, Clemson University. Canada with a snap. Oh, brought 
down. Fumble, but it was whistled. Play was whistled dead. Canada brought down by number 29. T. Byrne of Clemson University. Actually, number 29 is not T. Byrne. Number 28 is, but I don't know who number 29 is. And that just seemed to be a logical guess to me. Erskine College bringing up a third and 11 with 11 and a half minutes left to go in the contest. Seven to nothing. Pitch out to Dave Coyne. In traffic, brought down. Looks like he was dropped for about a yard loss on the handoff from Canada. Coming in the game, Wayne King, number nine, Barry Thedgo, 41, and number 53, Bob Elliott. Chris Cothran, Edward Gibson coming out. Along with 27, Levi. <laughs> Snap is thrown over the head of the kicker. He falls on it back about Erskine's. About Erskine's 10 yard line, it would appear to be. So Clemson Not in incredible good for field Erskine position. College. But you have to take the scoreboard out of the contest like this because it basically boils down to these guys working hard. Eleven guys working together. Another score on the board. Harrington in at quarterback. I got the wide He's side down. Of the field to the right. He Snap is back. Harrington hands off. Breaks tackle. No, he was in the grasp and brought down by the Erskine College line. Number 30 Collins was the running back there. Once again, the characteristic Erskine support. Hand off to number 30. Left side, T. Collins. Number 30 gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Clemson Touchdown. University. Clemson Tigers putting another six on the scoreboard, bringing the score 33. Three. 30, 80, 90, 20, 30, 39, 40. 80, 91, 11, 31, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 33 to nothing. Our scoreboard finally decides on 33 to nothing. Chip Shearer, a kick. The kick is up. up. It's no good. no good. And the score, 33 to nothing. After making his first three, he pulled the next two wide to the left. Giving him 60% on the night. <laughs> so you can't say we don't have any stats, huh? Kickoff up, low flopping kick, takes a bounce. Stumbles into the arms of Wayne King, who starts Wayne up the King. right side. Oh, Ooh, nailed. Smashed. Wayne King nailed by the Clemson player. Number 29 Good once again. Yes, Derek, that would be a person who's not on our list, but there is a 29 out there playing tonight. I think number 29 is at Halloween being the Invisible Man because they have no 29 on their roster. However, he just made the tackle for But Quinn if you ask Tigers. Wayne King if there's a number 29, I'm sure he'll he tell you there is. He would agree wholeheartedly. 
Little ghosts and goblins out tonight. It's Halloween at Erskine College. The fourth quarter flying by. Only 8-18 left in the fourth quarter. Erskine has the ball on their 35-yard line. The pitch goes back to David Coyne. David Coyne makes a nice shuffle move. He makes a good run and picks up up to the Erskine 40-yard line. Three to four line. Three to four yards. Up to the 40. Today has been pretty much the only trace of offense for Erskine tonight. Well, the Clemson Tigers are dressed in orange, but they're not pumpkins tonight as they leave 33 to nothing over the earth. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's number nine. Linus, number 29. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. Number Flags on the 27 play. for Clemson University. Levi a little anxious. That would be 27 for Erskine. Did I say Clemson? Yeah. That'd well, be 27 for Erskine, but if you were watching the TV, you'd know that. So. Basically, if you are watching the TV, what do you really need us for? That's a question we're not wanting to ask ourselves right now. Any copy or reproduction of this broadcast must have explicit written consent of the Erskine Broadcasting System. Keeping However, if you've enjoyed the Erskine College football saga, it's available on video cassette, VHS, or beta from the Erskine College bookstore. Erskine College football history and tradition. As Dave Coyne breaks tackle, brought down by number seven, R. Fort. Coyne, nice the, move by Coyne in the backfield. The They're runner literally dodged a series. bullet that time. Number something, T3, 33, I believe it was for Clemson. Made a serious stab at Dave Coyne. That's number 33, Cooley, a defensive back for Clemson. Cooley applying the heat to the Erskine College offense. Well, all right, we set it all through that time. Eric Peterson, who came from his tight end position to run it up the left side, gain a yard or two, which will leave it. Erskine ball, fourth down, and about six to go on their 39-yard line. A little under six minutes left to go at Henry C.X. Field. Biz Kong. Camden lines him up, he's got a split backfield. He takes the snap, rolls back, the southpaw throws Looking over for someone to throw to and grounds the ball short of Kevin Dinkins. Preparing for the snap, Bruce Canada flip back. Oh, fine reception by Clemson's number 17. Due to the fact that we're running out of tape on the video cassette, we will be stopping the film between plays. So please be warned, it is not, do not adjust your set. We are experiencing video difficulties right now. As Harrington launches a bomb right over the head of number 19. Not number 19, number 17, Kay Lane, the, who made an outstanding reception just to play earlier. Good. Hand off to number 31, Hall, fighting his way up the middle. Strong, powerful move by Hall for Clemson. Back to action here at Huggins Henry C. Oates Field. Harrington back in the shotgun, low snap. Bobbles it, runs to the left side, being pursued by 41. Touchdown, Clemson, but there's a flag on the play. I believe he made that wonderful pass, but I believe he made it past the line of scrimmage. That might be the call. He was being a quick pass by Harrington. And we do not have a touchdown. It will come back. Back to action here at Henry C. Oates Field. Clemson Tigers with the football, second and 15 for that last penalty. Harrington back, looking to throw in traffic over the middle. Hey, hey, hey. 
Back to action, Clemson with the ball. I mean, the 19 yard line of Erskine College, despite what the scoreboard says. Carrington back to the ball, hands off to the middle. Stopped short of the goal by Erskine number 76, Steve Arsenault. Clemson down, Harrington back, fakes the handoff, rolls around the left side. He's got room. Out of bounds. Touchdown, touchdown, Clemson University. Bringing the score 39 to nothing, Clemson University, as the paper airplanes begin to fly at Erskine College. I believe the flying fleet is coming in for a landing. A rather sharp belly landing, as the case may be. But still, you have to give them credit for the effort done tonight. Point after attempt being prepared. Interesting to note that the last two point after attempts have been missed by Clemson after hitting the first three. Clemson back, high snap, it's up, splits the uprights. Corbett kicking off the spirit still flying here at Erskine College as there's a fumble on the play into the hands of the Clemson. Clemson, Clemson recovers. recovers the fumble. Number 31 Hall, the star running back at Clemson left to go. Tonight, recovers the fumble. A short kick that time by the Clemson kicker who's obviously tired. His leg has been very active tonight. As we near the end of the Erskine College Clemson University football game, we'd like to thank everyone who's made this game possible. Without their support, none of this would have been able to happen. Two minutes left to go in the game. Clock is counting down. Number 30, T. Collins up the middle. Clemson comes up to the line of scrimmage. 1.20 left to go in the game. Erskine College taking a defensive posture. Harrington gets the snap, fades back, passes off to Hall, Hall around the outside, breaks tackle, but then brought down by number. Clemson coming to one of the last, will be the last couple of plays of the game. Harrington down, he's got Collins and Hall behind him. Movement on the Erskine side defense. Passes off to Collins, Collins at the middle, it's brought down by a horde of Erskine defense. The clock is running with 25 seconds left to go in the game. Seconds left to go in the game. 10, 9. Clemson will approach for the last play. 40 to nothing at Henry Sheds Field. Clemson sets up. 3, 2. Will they get the playoff? No, they did not get the last playoff. And that about wraps it up here in the Henry Sheds Stadium in Due West, South Carolina. The Erskine College Flying Fleet falling short to Clemson despite a brilliant effort. 40 to nothing. Join us next time as the Flying Fleet take on. I have no idea. Coastal Carolina at Coastal Carolina, Saturday afternoon, a week from now. But we will be back with more Erskine College football action as the Erskine College Flying Fleet meets Appalachian Good night. State Good night. for the uh, homecoming football game. We'd like to introduce you real quick to our cameraman, Alden Knight. Alden Knight, who's sporting a very nice beard this evening. Let's see, there he is. Bend down, big Alden, so they can see you. There Yay, he is. Yes, Alden Knight. Good night from everyone here in Good the press box. Good night from everyone here. We'd like to thank Cheers everyone who made this possible. Fans, give us a real big roar as we sign up here from Henry C. Oates Field Yay, in Due West, South Carolina. Erskine College Broadcasting Yay. signing off. Hey! Our highlight player of the game tonight for the Erskine College Flying Fleet was David Coyne, number 13, the tailback, who provided the Flying Fleet with about their only spark of offense all night and was a tough defensive back throughout most of the game. He's been with the Fleet since the first game. And he's always played very hard for the Flying Fleet, and a check of $1,000 will be donated in Erskine College to his name from Miller High Life. In the event of a blue moon, Clemson University's most valuable player would be the quarterback, Harrington, who showed an impressive arm in contributing to all of Clemson's touchdowns tonight. If you're watching this, this broadcast through Due West Cablevision Channel 19, it's property of the Erskine College Broadcasting System, copyright 1987.
Once see. again, we'd like to thank everyone who made this possible. There Dave. you see the Erskine player. Of Dave! The Dave Coyne. Dave Coyne. Erskine College most valuable player, Dave Coyne. Please wave to the camera, Mr. Dave. Player, trainer, entrepreneur, general, good guy, Dave Coyne. We'd like to thank the Clemson Tigers for journeying to do with South Carolina. We'd also like to thank Carrie We'd also Lyon. like to thank them for journeying back home because we're tired of them. <laughs> this, this is a truism. We'd also like to thank the gorgeous woman in the yellow and black sweatshirt who, sweater who just walked into the press box and lift all of our spirits. We'd also like to thank all the coaches, trainers, fans, referees, field maintenance people, and, and last students. last but not least, players. Players. Players, most definitely. These guys, they gave it all. They've worked every day to really bring you what has been an outstanding season of Erskine College Club football with two games left to go. From Henry C. Oates Stadium, this is Alden Knight for Derek Ellington and Alan Hancock. Wishing you a good evening and good night.